So a lot of us uh, who collect film will have stacks of film like this, our precious package movies. And we'd like to keep these for a long time, wouldn't we? But of course they are getting old. Uh, the prints are fading to pink, they may also get vinegar syndrome. There's all kinds of problems that the films that we treasure are going to encounter as they get older. Now of course nobody's making new prints of all these films so uh, whether we like it or not the only real way to keep them is to digitally transfer them and I'm going to show you a way in which you can actually transfer your sound movies using the Wolverine scanner and um, be able to actually synchronize the sound up to the film in editing. Some of us will have uh, the Wolverine scanner this is the a standard definition version that takes 200 foot of film and uh, one or two little uh, tweaks we've made to it. We've added a little uh, pad of felt here and here just to wipe the film before it goes through the gate. Um, what I prefer to do is not actually use the pickup. I tend to let the film go into a drop box and right behind this scanner we've got the HD version currently running and it's capturing some old, uh, old movie film at the moment and the film is just going from the scanner straight down into the Dropbox. Now the reason for the Dropbox is just because um, the nature of the scanner is that the film is being picked up by a constant feed and that constant feed can sometimes just tug the film a little bit as it's going through uh, and it, it creates a little bit extra shake sometimes on the resultant video files. So allowing the film to drop to a box uh, free, fall, free fall, um actually makes the picture a little bit steadier. So what we're going to show here is how to synchronize sound to your digitized package movies. Uh, what I'm currently running here is the Pearl and Dean logos and I've just done an HD scan on the Wolverine scanner and uh, I've already got a projection transfer which is where the sound is going to come from. So I'll just pause that there and what we'll do is we'll bring that down into the timeline give it a nice black to start and we'll go for a black on the end and what we're going to need to do is we're going to find a point in here somewhere to cut and um, we'll do it in a space where we know we have an image that is on the projection transfer as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut on the first number of the countdown and what you have to do is notch it up it's just about there. That's the first frame. Back one, back one. So we cut that, remove that, and then the first frame of the video file is that one. Okay. As I say, we know that that image is on the projection transfer. We'll go to the end, and we'll find a cut point on the end. I actually scanned quite a lot of uh, blank reader on this. Um, see. So I'm using this line, this uh, is the, the Q marker, we're going to cut on that and that image is on the footage that's going to be deleted. So that's it gone. Now what we'll then do is take the projection transfer. This is the projection transfer. I'll just play a bit of that so you can see that. Picture quality is not essential for the projection transfer. The picture is only to give you a visual reference for the cutting and synchronization of the sound. So there's the picture. That enables us to see the, the picture in relation to the sound and synchronization. Okay, so what we do is we bring that onto the video timeline. And then we're not changing any settings. And what we'll do from there is we'll go on to that, we'll scan across it and we'll find the same start frame. So as I say, we're looking for the first number on the countdown. Now, although video files, camera video files are different, um, as you can see, that number appears for two frames. Right? But that doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything in terms of synchronization. So now we split that. And then the first frame of that uh, projection transfer is identical to the first frame of the digital transfer. But the digital transfer, remember, is only running at 20 frames per second. Projection transfer is at 24 frames per second. 
So now we need to find the same end point on the projection transfer. And it's the first frame in which the, the marker appears. There it is there. And we cut there. So that marker point has gone. And then what we do is we select an option. This option here is split audio. That brings the audio from the view file down into the sound line. We can now delete that. And what we do then is we click on the audio file. And up here, we can see the running time of that. 1 minute, 20 seconds, and 9 frames. Okay? So what we'll do is we'll just bring that down here. I'll line it up to the start. And you'll notice that it's shorter than the digital scan. And that's because the digital scan is running at a slower speed. So we need to change the running time of the digital scan to match the soundtrack. And what we do in here is we go to Speed Time Lapse option. And this gives us a frame frequency option, it gives us speed in terms of percentage, or we can give it a new clip a duration, and that gives you in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Now, just to cancel that and remind myself, 1 minute, 20 seconds, and 9 uh, frames. So, speed, we're leaving the minutes the same, 20 seconds and nine frames okay so when i click ok the video file has now shortened in length and if i go in close you can see that the start lines are in line if i just click to the end of that the finish point is in line and then when i play this this should all be in sync This is Coral Video Studio uh, Pro X10 Ultimate. Um, it's not ideal because sometimes it tends to lose its own settings and it has lost its own settings. So I'm going to have to do a quick change here. I've done a little bit of tidying up. I've put some anti-shake onto the file because there is a bit of bob and weave on the transfer. There is also a bit of top and bottom. I'm not going to worry terribly much about that because it's not really this version of the logo that I want. It's actually this version. And again, later on, I will actually adjust that to remove the, the bit of top and bottom that's uh, occurring in the frame. There's a, this particular print uh, has a tendency to move up and down in the frame, and there's not really any much way around that. So anti-shake is the best thing to kind of stabilise it. But you've got to use anti-shake very carefully, because obviously that's depending on what movement is in the frame. And that actually can off-centre your picture rather adversely uh, at times. So I'm just going to make a, a video file now of this, and we'll click the share option, and we're going to keep it as it is there, and it's going to that file, that's fine, so we'll just click start on that, and in uh, a few minutes we'll come back to this, and I'll show you the finished composite. Okay, so the video file is now complete, that's it there, we're just going to go to a wide view, and we'll press play. See how it sounds.
transfer synchronized to the soundtrack of the original film uh, we've got the Wolverine transfer as I say using the the scanner and you've got the projection transfer so you need both of those to do the synchronization the projection transfer gives you the picture reference to make the cuts to the digital transfer and also gives you the soundtrack for the transfer uh, you use the running time of the soundtrack to reset the running time of the digital transfer to make it match the soundtrack you need to make a cut a clear cut at the beginning and at the end on a selected frame that matches both the projection transfer and the digital transfer to ensure that your soundtrack lines up when you reset the speed and that is basically how you do it